you've got questions, well, we have the man to answer those questions. Jeffrey Levine from Buckingham. Jeffrey, welcome back to another episode. I forgot the hammer. Ask the hammer. That's all right. I'm here. We'll make it work. Yeah. See if we can still ask the hammer. So here's a great question. It's in the inbox. It goes like this. What will the effect of Roth IRA conversions on Social Security and Irma be if all assets are in a Roth IRA and we collect only Social Security income? I am planning a multi-year Roth conversions in the next 10 years, and that will convert almost $1.7 million to a Roth. I am 15 years away from retirement. Well, if you're that far away from retirement, we're probably more than 10 years away from Social Security. We're probably more than 10 years away from when you would begin to be impacted by income for your future Medicare Part B or Part D premiums, known as the IRMA, the Income Related Monthly Adjustment Amount, effectively the penalty that you have to pay if your income two years prior to the current year is over the applicable thresholds. If you're before those times and you finish your conversions, and you said you're looking at a multi-year conversion here to be done in 10 years, well, if it's done in 10 years before those things happen, there's not going to be any impact on your IRMA and nor will there be any impact on Social Security because it's already done. It's taken care of. You've taken care of all of that income beforehand. And if you then take future distributions tax-free from your Roth IRA, those don't increase your income for Social Security taxation purposes like other tax-free income, say municipal bond interest does. Roth distributions here that are tax-free are truly tax-free. And to the same point, those same distributions don't increase your income for Medicare or uh, Part B or Part D purposes either. They're truly tax-free distributions. Yeah. So one quick follow-up, obviously he's going to convert over a period of time, $1.7 million, maybe it turns into $2 million. So maybe we're looking at what, $200,000 per year in, in conversions. He'll have to worry about maybe managing his tax brackets, not to, to avoid being pushed up into a higher tax bracket when he does these conversions. Yeah, absolutely. And that was you know one thing that really stuck out to me as you were asking this question is, you know, this this sort of says, I have a plan to do this. I want to do this. I intend to be done in 10 years. And then everything I have is going to be Social Security and Roth IRAs, which to me means you're probably living on a, a tax-free income stream in retirement, which sounds really great. But the question is, is it really great, right? What sounds really great and what is really great are not always the same thing. Everybody likes the the, the sound of, I will never pay taxes again. But if you have to dramatically overpay today to make that a reality tomorrow, that's not really great planning, right? The goal of good tax planning is not to create the lowest tax bill in any one year, whether that's today or at some given point in the future. Rather, the goal of good tax planning is to pay taxes over your lifetime so that the total bill you accumulate over that cumulative period of time is as low as possible. But again, not focusing on any one particular year over the other. That just doesn't create the optimal outcome, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, I know the goal of our Ask the Hammer segments is to answer our reader's question, and you did that. Yeah, well, it was a good question, right? It's, a, it's one that a lot of people have and we certainly look forward to additional questions from our readers. So if you have a question, give us a shout. Email us at askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. Again, that's askthehammer at buckinghamgroup.com. And Bob and I look forward to seeing your questions in our inbox real soon. 